Hi and welcome to this work from home dynamic flow. So this class is great if you work at home at a desk, you spend a lot of time sat down because we'll be targeting those muscles and those areas of the body that you use or rather don't use while sitting at a desk. So sitting down, getting tight hip flexes in that hunched over position to be working to strengthen the upper back and we'll also do a bit with the hands, the fingers, the wrists and the neck as well. And we'll start in a standing position, so just come to a standing position with your feet about hip distance apart and we'll just start with a few deep breaths just to really centre us and bring us into the room and our practice. So you're just leaving the hands down by the side or you can place them on the belly, maybe close the eyes or soften the gaze. And we'll just start to bring the focus to our breath. Just noticing where your breath is going. Maybe it's going into the chest. Maybe you can feel the ribs rise. Maybe you can feel the belly expand. Noticing whether the breath is shallow or whether the breath is quite deep. We now we'll take three deep breaths together, concentrating on deep belly breathing. So breathing in through the belly, in through the nose rather, out through the nose, noticing that breath reach the belly. So on the inhale, feel it expand, and on the exhale, feel it soften. So we'll take those breaths together. So inhale, exhale. Two more times, inhale, exhale. Last time, inhale. And just releasing the arms down if you've got them on the belly. You can open the eyes if you've got them closed. And just let your breath return to its natural rhythm if you can, trying to maintain a deeper breath during the practice, especially in some of the poses that we're holding for a longer period of time. So we'll start with the hands and the wrists today. So just start by bringing the hands out in front, really spread the fingers and the thumbs so you can really start to feel the muscles in the hands engage. And as we're here, we wanna make sure we're not rounding forward, that we're drawing the shoulder blades together. So start to feel some activation in the rhomboids, in between the shoulder blades, push into that wall. You might start to feel some heat in the forearms. And just hold it here. And then release, shake it out. And we'll do that again. So start to push into that invisible wall. And then this time, start to rotate the left hands. The fingers are pointing down. You might get a nice stretch over the under arm here. And with your right hand, just start to gently pull back each finger, creating space in between the joints. Almost massaging the finger as you go. It can feel quite nice. We don't often move our fingers in this direction, especially when we work at the desk. And then shake it out. So we'll do the same on the other side. So push into your invisible wall, pull those shoulder blades together, and then start to rotate the fingers of the right hand. So the fingers are pointing down, start to feel that nice stretch maybe feel that stretch and then take the left hand and then just starting with the pinky finger slowly start to pull back just creating space in between the joints and then shake it out okay, we've got one more for the hands so again bringing the hands out in front pull the shoulder blades together but this time we've got the fingers so they're pointing down so you might feel the stretch over the top of the wrist this time. And then with the right hand, take the thumb and just place it in between the palm and start to push into the palm gently. And as you do that, you want to pull the hand towards you. 
If you like, I quite like doing this, and um, you can give it a go. You can also massage the center of the palm while you're here. And then release, shake it out, do the same on the other side. So when you're ready, bring your hands in front, shoulder blades pulling together, so getting some, some kind of action in the rhomboids. And then with the left thumb, placing it in between the palm, just gently start to pull back. Maybe massaging the palm a little bit, if that feels good for you. And then release, shake it out. You might like to give yourself a couple of shoulder rolls here, so just drawing the shoulders up towards the ears, holding it there. And release, roll them down the back. Again, inhale to draw the shoulders up. Exhale, roll them down the back. So we'll move on to it a little bit for the neck now. So when we are in that position, we tend to have our neck down. So we're just going to do a little bit to release the neck. And we'll start arms down by the side. Just a few neck movements. So taking the gaze over the left, back to centre, to the right, back to centre, to the left again, back to centre, to the right back to center, and then we'll send the gaze up, only as far as it feels good. Some people find this quite, um, quite intense on the back of the neck. So if that's the case, you can just send the gaze of the eyes up as far as it feels good. If it feels okay, you can look further up, get a nice stretch through the front of the neck. And then back to center, then chin to chest. To center, gaze up center, chin to chest, and then back to center. From here, one more for the neck. So this time we'll just drop the left ear over the left shoulder. Getting a nice stretch down the side of the neck. If you want to take it further, you can send the left hand up and then just put it on the side of the head. Just letting gravity deepen you into the stretch. You can also send the right fingertips out to the side maybe just crossing them over the back and that can deepen the stretch over the neck and the shoulder as well because we do tend to get quite tight in this area <laughs> and then inhale support the head come up to center we'll take it to the other side so right ear to right shoulder again maybe taking the fingertips to the side of the head maybe sending that arm behind the body if you want to deepen that stretch at all. And remember to keep breathing here. And support the head, come back up to center, release the arms out. Just for a side stretch now, we'll inhale, reach the arms up, really stretching through the fingers, maybe coming on to the toes, full body stretch. And place the hands down with the left hand, we'll take the right, wrist, inhale to lengthen and exhale just dropping over to the left side. Inhale to come back up to centre, switch the grip of the wrist on the next inhale, lengthen through the spine and exhale just drop over to the opposite side. And inhale to come back up to center, releasing the arms down. We're just going to shake the whole body out now. So really getting the blood flowing into the fingers, into the toes, shaking out the arms, shaking out the legs. When we're sat down all day, certain parts of the body can really lose circulation or reduce circulation. So just really want to get the blood flowing. And then when you're ready, back to centre, you might feel a bit of tingling, maybe in the fingers, maybe in the toes. Great. So now come to the edge of your mat. We're going to do a few down dog walkouts just to really work with that dynamic movement and get some more of the blood flowing in the body. So you can stand with your feet hip distance apart. You need mat space for room in front of you. On the inhale, we'll sweep the arms up. And then exhale, start to bend at the knees, making your way down into a forward fold. You can keep the knees bent as much as you need to, keeping that back nice and straight, placing the hands on the floor, 
Let's have our first one of the day. We will just walk those feet out, waking up the hips. You can release the head down if you like. Maybe shaking the head out, yes or no. And then when you're ready, come back to centre. Again, keeping the bend in the knees as much as you can to keep the hands on the floor. And then from here, we'll start to walk the hands out in front. Coming into a plank position, so shoulders are stacked over the wrists. And then lifting the hips up and back into a downwards dog. And then coming back forward into our plank position. And start to walk the hands back. Moving back into our forward fold. Push into the whole foot and come back up to standing. Reach the arm up overhead. Gaze can be up if it feels okay for the neck. And exhale, bring the arms down by the side. So we'll do that a few more times. So on the inhale, reaching the arms up. Exhale, arms can come out wide as you start to hinge forward from the hips, so not bending from the back. Keeping the back nice and straight, making our way into our forward fold, walking the hands out, come into our plank position, pull the navel in, shoulders stacked over wrist, lift the hips up and back for a downwards dog, then come forward back into our plank, walk the hands back. Forward fold, push through the hip, the feet rather, bringing the arms up and overhead, and exhale down by the side. Two more times, inhale, reaching the arms up, exhale, forward fold. Walk the hands forward for a plank, remember to keep that navel in, and then hips up and back, downwards dog. Inhale forward for our plank and walking the hands back. Forward fold, push through the feet, arms out nice and wide, reaching them up and overhead. And then exhale down by the side for our mountain pose. Last time, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hinging forward, bringing the hands down to the floor, forward fold. Walk the hands forward, plank, navel in, nice strong core. Hips up and back, downwards dog. Inhale, come forward, All right, plank again. And walking the hands back, forward fold. Push through the feet, bring the arms up overhead. And then exhale, bring the arms down by the side, back in our Tadasana. I'll just take a moment here. You might notice that your breath has maybe gotten a bit more, or you've gotten a bit more of a breath maybe. Maybe the breath is a bit quicker. So from here, we'll move to the front of your mat, so whichever end of the mat you want to work in. We just want to make sure we've got enough room behind us because we walking or stepping backwards from there. Again, so it can be hip distance apart. And we'll just start with the arms down by the side, maybe resetting here, so just lifting all 10 toes off the mat. And then just slowly placing each toe back on the mat. Palms can be faced forwards, maybe rolling the shoulders up and down the back. And imagining that there's a String attached to the crown of your head, and it's just pulling you up so you've got a nice straight spine. I'm just taking a few deep breaths here. We'll start with the left leg. So, on the next inhale, just stepping back with the left leg, come onto the ball of that left foot, bending through that front knee, bringing your hands to your hips, just checking your hips are aligned so sometimes we might be open out to the side and if that's the case we just want to pull back with that front foot and start to rotate the hips so they're facing forward. Once you're happy with the hips we'll inhale reach the arms up, gaze can be up if it feels okay for the neck and from here we'll move with a few lunge kind of squats so on the next inhale, we'll start to cactus the arms out wide, palms facing forward and bring the knee down to the floor. 
Inhale to rise. Exhale, knee to floor. Inhale to rise. Exhale, knee to floor. Inhale, rise. Exhale, knee to floor. Inhale, rise. Great. So from here, we'll drop the left hand forward, right hand back, twisting over to the right side. side. If you your balance is good, you can maybe send the gaze towards the, the back thumb. Hold it here for a few breaths. This is where the deep belly breath can help with the balance and help maintain the pose. And then inhale, bringing both arms up. Exhale, rotate the hips so they're facing the left side of the room. Drop the left heel down to the floor. Keep that bend in the front knees and bring the arms down. Palms facing down, gaze over the front fingers. This is our warrior two pose. Again, holding it here for a few breaths. Nice, strong pose. And we'll flip the front hand. We'll just bring the waist, chest forward slightly, and then sweep that hand up and over, dropping the back hand down the back of the leg. Or reverse warrior. Keeping that bend in the front knee, making sure the knees stay stacked over that ankle. And inhale, make our way back up. And then from here again, hinge forward at the hips. Bring that right hand down to the top of the right knee. And then inhale, sweeping that left hand up. You can either have it up so the fingertips are facing the ceiling, or you can rotate the hand towards the front and then just bring it over. You might start to feel a nice stretch down the side of the body. And on the next inhale, coming up, coming back up to a warrior two. And then rotating back into our high lunge, we come onto the ball of that back foot. And from here, we'll start to bring the weight into the front legs and moving into a balancing pose. Lifting that back leg up. You can have the hands maybe at prayer position in front of the chest, maybe on the hips. Or you can have them out at aeroplane arms. So this is a warrior three kind of variation. Trying to keep the hips nice and flat. Testing our balance this morning. Really working the muscles in the right leg and in the calf. And then from here, you can start to place the hands on the floor. Maybe keeping a bend in that knee. Back toes are still pointing down. We'll continue to work the muscles in the leg a little bit. Just bear with me, we're almost there. And we'll start to bend that front knee and just tap the shin of the left leg to the back. And then inhale, coming back up. Exhale, tap in the back of the leg. Inhale, back up. Exhale, back of the leg. Two more. Inhale, up. Back of the leg. Now, the last one, tap in that leg, inhale up, and then from there you can place that left foot back down at the front of the mat, moving into our forward fold position, even a nice generous bend in the legs, and then push through the feet, make our way up to a standing position, reaching through the hands, and exhale, arms down by the side. So hopefully you felt quite a bit of work in the right glute and the whole left or right leg. So we'll be doing the same sequence on the opposite side now. So readjusting your feet, arms down by the side. Taking a moment just to notice how the body feels, whether one side feels different to the other. And then when you're ready, we'll step back with the right foot, coming onto the ball of that right foot, bending the front knee, 
making our hips are nice and parallel to the front of the mat. And then when you're ready, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, tap the knee down to the floor and really start to cactus the arms open, palms facing forward, drawing those shoulder blades together. And then rising back up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down, tapping the knee. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale, reaching up. Last time. Exhale, tapping the knee down. Inhale up. Right. So from here, we'll drop the left hand down. Right hand forward and we'll twist over towards the left side. Maybe sending the gaze towards the left thumb. Nice twist. Remember to keep breathing here, focusing on that deep belly breath. And inhale, coming back to our high lunge. On the next exhale, drop the back heel down. Toes are pointing out about 45 degrees, keeping that bend in the front knee. Arms coming down to shoulder height, palms facing down. Notice whether the body is coming forward over that leg here and just see if you can kind of come up straight. So you, it sometimes helps to imagine that there's a string attached to the forehead and it's really pulling up through the crown of the head, creating that nice straight alignment. Holding it here for another round of breath. And then flip that front hand forward, hinge forward at the hips slightly, and sweep that left hand up and over, dropping the back hand down the back of the leg. Keep a bend in the front knee on a reverse warrior. And inhale, pull the navel in, engage the core, come back, back up to warrior two. From here, hinge forward at the hips, drop the forearm down to the top of the leg. Sweep that back arm up, fingertips can either face up, or you can rotate the palms that's facing forward and bring that arm up and over. Make, notice whether you are kind of rolling forward at all and see if you can just open up the chest. We also don't want to be putting too much weight into the forearm that's resting on the leg, so engaging the core to, to make sure we're not dumping weight there. On the next inhale, push through the legs, engage the core, come back up to warrior two. Great. So from here, come back into that high lunge position by coming onto the ball of the back foot. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And on the next exhale, again, we'll move into that balancing pose to start to bring the weight forward into that left leg. Maybe we're bringing the arms out to the side to help with the balance. Notice whether the hips are coming up at all and just if you can level them to the floor. And hands can come to prayer. They can come out to the side. They can come out in front of you if you've got room and the balance is good. Or they can stay on the hips. Really engaging the muscles in that left leg. A strong warrior three pose. And we're trying to be in a T shape here. So imagine again that there's something pulling you from the crown of the head and the arch of the foot in separate directions. And then bring the fingertips down towards the floor, bend through that front knee, and we'll take the right shin to the back of the leg, squatting down. We will start to get some activation in the outer glute. And then straighten, tap in at the back of the shin, and then extend, 
three more times, tapping, extend, two more times, tap, extend, last time, tap, extend, and then from there, just placing that foot back down at the front of the mat, move the hands back, back into our forward fold position, and from here, push through the legs, making our way up, reaching through the fingertips, and then exhale, releasing the arms down by the side, and just giving the legs a little bit of a shake out. All right, so we'll be moving on to the floor now. So just turning around, so we've got like, a lot of room in front of us. And like we did at the start of the class, we'll inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hinge forward at the hips, bring the hands down to the floor, forward fold. And then walk the hands out to a plank position. We want to check that our shoulders are stacked over our wrists. Pulling our navel in. Start to like really push through the upper back here. And trying to keep the bum nice and low. And we'll just hold it here for about five breaths. If you do need to come down at all onto the knees, then you can do it at any point. And if your hands are a bit sore and you've got a yoga mat, you can also just fold the mat over a little bit and maybe just rest the weight on there to help with that. So just holding it here a little bit longer. We can make our way into a child's pose, rubbing our forehead down to the floor, arms extended. Maybe bringing the arms down by the side. Slowly making your way back up, bringing the hands again so they're under the shoulders and we'll make our way into our plank position once again and this time we'll turn and come into a side plank so you can come onto the sides of the feet check that shoulder's still stacked over the ankle maybe bring that right hand up maybe resting it on the hip or if you like you can take a variation of our side plank by just dropping the left knee down I'm working here today, so whichever option is good for you, we'll be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, releasing that right hand back down, drop the knees down, Maybe come back for a child's pose. You can release the hands, release the wrists. Maybe making some circles if that feels good. And then coming back up, and we've got the other side to do. So setting up for our plank position. And then moving into our side plank, so making sure the shoulders stay stacked over the wrist, taking the variation of your choosing. And we'll be here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release that left hand down, release the knees, come back for our child's pose position. Again, maybe rolling the wrists. And from here, just walking the hands up. Just take a baby camel pose. So this really helps to open up those hip flexors. So just bring our hands to our lower back, on the shoulders together, so start to open up through the chest, 
and then just gently start to push the hips forward, leaning back slightly. Gaze can be back as far as feels comfortable, but just be mindful of the neck if you feel any pain. And then just bring the gaze back up. If you feel any pain in the lower back, then just come out of it slightly. Just work within your comfort within your limitations. And slowly pull the navel in, come back up to a seated position. We'll be making our way onto our backs now, so just swinging the feet out, bringing the soles of the feet to the floor, hands can come out to the side, palms facing each other. Pull the navel in, we'll just slowly make our way down with control. Bring the arms up overhead. For a full body, deep body stretch, stretch through the fingers and the toes. And exhale, release. Bring the soles of the feet to the floor. You want the feet about hip distance apart, arms down by the side. The two options, or three options actually, with the hands, you can have palms on the floor facing down. You can have the elbows on the floor, hands up, palms facing each other. Or if you really want to work the core today, you can bring the hands so they're on the shoulders. This is our strongest kind of option as it really helps build more stability in the core. So just see where you are today. And then from here, start to tuck the tailbone up and just rolling the body up, coming into our bridge pose. And the hips really pushing up here, engaging the glutes. You want about a size of an apple between your chin and your chest, so just make sure you're not crunching the neck at all. You've got lots of space there. And we'll just hold it here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, One, and slowly rolling back down. Maybe hug the knees in. You can roll side to side if you like. Massaging the back of the lower, the lower back, back of the lower back. <laughs> and then just place the feet back on the floor. We'll do that one more time. So again, rolling up from the tailbone. Making our way into our bridge pose. You could try, if you like, this is optional. You'd be lifting the left leg, holding it there. And placing that left foot back down. And then lifting the right leg. And then placing that foot back down. And holding it here for five, four, three. Two, one, slowly roll down the same way you came in, placing the tailbone down last, bringing the knees into centre, just rocking side to side, maybe taking some circles. And finally we'll just end with a twist, so send the left leg out long, hug that right leg in, Bring the right hand out to the side, left hand to the outside of the leg, and just take that across the body. It doesn't need to touch the floor at all. Just go where it feels comfortable for you, so I've got quite a bit of space between my knee and the floor. You can send the left leg out long as well, if that feels good for you. And the gaze can be up towards the ceiling, you can send the gaze towards the fingertips. And then on the next inhale, just slowly come back up to centre, releasing that leg down, and then just bring the opposite leg in, into the body, hugging that leg in. Again, send the left arm out to the side, right hand to the outside of the leg, and slowly 
just guide that leg across the body, keeping the left shoulder on the floor, and gaze can be up or towards the fingertips. slowly make our way back up to centre, releasing that leg down. So you can take any final movement that you like now before we move into our Shavasana. So maybe just bring the knees in together, maybe rocking them side to side, circles. Or if you like, you can take happy baby pose. So bringing the hands to the outsides of the feet, the arms are on the inside. Hands also the feet up towards the floor. Tailbone is kind of pushing down towards the floor, so really flattening out the spine. And we just pull down the legs if that feels good. Or if you like, you can straighten and bend one leg at the time, kind of rock side to side. I quite like this option. And then when you're ready, just place the feet back on the floor. You've got two options for your Shavasana. You can either bring the feet so the mat distance apart, let the knees drop in towards each other. We send the feet out long. Hands can come down by the side, palms facing up. Or you can let the hands just gently rest on the belly if you would like to bring the focus back to the breath. And we'll just spend about a minute here, just letting our breath return back to its natural rhythm. Stay here for as long as you like. However, if you need to get ready for work or get ready to go, you can just start to make some small movements with the hands, with the feet. Maybe move the head side to side, massaging the back of the head. And draw the feet or the knees in towards the chest, just hugging them in. And then if you like, you can just roll them to one side for a moment. Before slowly pushing it your way back up to a seated position. So that brings us to the end of our class today. I hope you really enjoyed that full body workout. We really did focus on those muscles, those areas of the body that, that will be beneficial for working from home. So have a lovely day and thank you for practicing with me.